Hey guys, John from John's DIY Playground. Today I've assembled a bunch of components here and this is everything you'll need to make what's called an Outernet um, satellite receiver. This satellite receiver is capable of receiving data. It can get files that can be audio, they could be PDFs, it can also receive weather data and it receives it from one of three satellites that are positioned around the world. Um, Irmasat satellite um, and I was inspired after watching on YouTube a gentleman named Eric with his uh, Make Me Lab channel on YouTube. I'll link to it in my info box below but uh, he showed how to do it with the Raspberry Pi 3. There's one other way to do it with the $5 computer called Chip that I've reviewed in the past. That $5 computer though is uh, a little bit more difficult to get software onto so what we're going to do here is we've got a fresh uh, 32 gigabyte um, uh, micro SD card, we have our patch antenna, there's an amplifier, and there is a nice Raspberry Pi case, power supply, and a software defined radio or SDR dongle that we'll plug in and use with our setup. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I got my Raspberry Pi 3 mounted into this clear case. It's a very nice case. Comes with a couple of these aluminum heat sinks you can see I stuck onto the chips for. Uh, better cooling. Uh, Pi 3 is pretty nice. Uh, it's got four USB ports and an Ethernet port on the end. We won't be needing that, but um, power in on this side, HDMI, which I always also won't use, really will go remote. And uh, if you haven't used a Pi before, uh, Raspberry Pi uses these tiny little micro SD cards, at least in the third generation version of Pi 3, that go right in the bottom slot here. And that card will have all the operating system and files that we need that are going to be pre-configured on a website that I'm going to show you in a minute here. But to do that, what we're going to do is take this fresh card and we're going to put it into the adapter. I'm going to stick it into my Windows-based PC. We'll download the files we need and then we'll copy them onto this card, then put it into the Pi. Then we can uh, hook up the rest of the uh, components and fire up. All right, guys, so I put my flash uh, SD card into my drive here. And you can see it popped up as it's a removable disk. The file system we do want to have is FAT32 in this case. It should not be NTFS or any other type of file system. Um, so let's just call this thing and label it RxOS and just hit apply and hit OK. So we label it. Um, the website I mentioned we need to visit is HTTPS Outernet.is and there are lots of good documentation here. Uh, it describes how everything works. In fact, you can buy some of the products here, uh, including a kit. I bought all of my equipment from Amazon. It ran about $130 total for everything that I had shown in the previous uh, earlier clips. But go ahead and click on documentation. Um, brings up a README. Um, there's forums, lots of help there too. Um, but what we're going to file today is the manual. Um, this uh, L-band receiver manual is what we want and uh, it loads a PDF file. Uh, and most importantly it talks about the different installation steps if you're going to do it on Raspberry Pi or if you're going to do it on chip. Uh, and a nice little overview of how it broadcasts and how it works. Um, what we're going to do is look for the um, links to the Raspberry Pi files and here it says here's the latest image for Raspberry Pi. It brings us to another one of their uh, subfolders I'm just looking for the, the most latest version, so in this case it's October 30th, 2016. I click on that link. Now you're presented with two choices. You can see there's two different ones called image and the other one is a PKG file or package file. If you're starting with a fresh Raspberry Pi like I am, we want the zip file, the bigger file. If you're upgrading from another version of the uh, RxOS and you already have that running on your Pi, then you want the package file. Um, so I'll go ahead and take this and it's going to take a uh, few minutes to download it's 158 megabytes so when that's done um, I'll pick back up and we'll uh, we'll get this loaded onto our PC. Alright our download of the zip file ended I unzipped the files there's only three of them one is this install text file I am using Windows currently and uh, we're gonna use this Windows 32 disk imager if you don't have it you can get it at this URL address and download it. it's a very small program also so to use that and burn our image to our SD card, uh, we open up the Win32 disk imager program, hit this little folder open icon, um, find where you opened and unzipped your files. Just grab that image file, hit open, and sometimes it disappears like that, but you have to also pick a destination drive. Our 
micro SD card is sitting on what's my L drive and then just hit the right key it'll say are you sure of course we're sure we're in the playground and this goes really quickly as you can see and write successful so we'll take the card out of our hard drive our, out of our PC I'm sorry and then we're gonna put that micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi which will be powered off I'll show you how the other hardware goes together then we can fire it up for the first time all right we're almost getting close to the real fun part this kind of shows how everything should be laid out and put together to get the final assembly done we've got our micro SD card now with our software we're just going to take that and put it in the bottom of our Raspberry Pi like that. And then for the next thing, we can put together the amplifier to the software-defined radio dongle like this. Might be easier to just twist this thing like that. Just hand snug. It doesn't have to be super tight. And then finally, the antenna connection onto the antenna amplifier. Okay, so last thing here just select any one of these four USB ports plug it in like so and what we are going to do and I'll show you this next before we apply the power which is take this and plug it in it would start booting up and running is uh, we're gonna show how to figure out where that satellite is that we have to hit from your home location so right before we power up let me show you that real quick Okay, right before we're about to power up, there's one other piece of information we want to get, and that's about the satellite we're going to use. Like I said, there are three different satellites around the world, and you can find the details on each one of them on the uh, Outer Web uh, website, the Outer Net website, I'm sorry. And uh, in our case, I'm in North America, Michigan, and I'm looking for this Nmarsat 4-F3. Now, it's a geosynchronous uh, satellite. It doesn't move. It sits right over the equator here, and... Um, tells you a little bit about where it's at um, but if we do a tracking on it it knows my house relative to the satellite I hit this little track one satellites button and what it's going to do is give me the actual um, compass reading that I need to do and to point at this thing and try to get uh, a signal so there's the Nmarsat and then relative to my house what I'm looking at here is the azimuth I want to know that I'm 200.5 degrees I'm looking south southwest to see this satellite and an elevation of 37.4 degrees so not straight up and down not straight at the ground but almost a 45 degree angle so that's good and then I'll just use my phone and the compass on that to find 200 degrees and I'll point that uh, little um, receiving patch antenna towards that direction and then let's get our uh, our satellite our receiver fired up and go through the setup Okay guys, we are going back to the manual real quickly, uh, page 8, uh, about setting up the receiver. Uh, now that we're powered up, our Raspberry Pi is a hotspot. So find a phone or a laptop or something else besides the Pi. Get your Wi-Fi turned on and look for a hotspot called OuterNet attached to that. Then open a web browser, type my.outernet.is. And then you can uh, go through this setup wizard for the first time. Um, I'm not showing it because... Uh, there's a username and password that you have to set up and then there's also this reset token that will be visible to everyone so write down those credentials and uh, then continue on hit finish and choose the right satellite for your area and then the start using outernet button so once that's done hopefully you've got this symbol at the top of your web browser that means everything's going well um, if not if you've got these other ones uh, you're not quite pointed at the right area of the sky and then you have to adjust point the antenna and there's a nice detailed way to do that there's a special tuner application for that a signal meter and uh, this next page uh, tells you how to do it you have to uh, log in as a super user after you drop down from this uh, little menu bar and uh, then you'll get these other key figures that you're looking for so you can kind of tune in real time so once you have that set up you'll be all set and let it download for a while and get some uh, information it'll take a little while I'll show you what it looks like after a little bit uh, of time of usage and uh, what you can expect to see go into these settings here and you can go in these tuner settings you can see right here I'm looking real good I've got a really nice signal to noise ratio I think this has to be a three or higher <clears throat> and uh, we're up at nine so that's good we're starting to take down some data um, gonna have to get some more packets in here before I can really show you anything but uh, things are going well and let's come back in a couple minutes and show you what I got 
Okay, guys, well, I actually let this thing run uh, for a full 24 hours before recording this now. It, I discovered in the first hour I only took down maybe one uh, file. The download rate is pretty slow. Um, you can't speed it up in any way that I know of, but um, my dB rate today, the signal to noise ratio, has dropped a little bit. It was running n around 9 in the 9 to 10 range, actually. Today it's down about 6.3. Uh, it's not really a cloudy day or anything. Um, not too much different than yesterday, so I'm not sure why the dB level changed. But anyway, um, we have files now, so it's really good. Let me give you guys a look. There's a bunch of amateur radio stuff in here. Um, there's news and text files. Um, there are some other files with community content that talks about SOS and Morse code and what the Morse code thing looks like. Um, this is all stuff that I can't control what comes down, right? It's just being pushed to me, and that's how this whole thing works. Wikipedia, kind of funny. Um, it's almost like having a miniature version of Wikipedia. Whatever entries come down, again, I can't control, but if you hit Browse, you can see different entries, and uh, you, know, you can find out about your friend Bill Gates here. And It's just like Wikipedia on the regular Internet, um, but just stored locally on the Raspberry Pi. And then uh, one of the most impressive features, I think, is the Weather Globe. Um, this is uh, plotted on the globe that you can uh, control with the mouse, zoom in, zoom out with the mouse wheel. Um, I'm in Michigan, so it'll render once you stop moving it around. And uh, if you click on this little legend down here, you can see we're looking at the wind right now. Um, it's just kind of showing what's going on with the wind surface uh, temperature or uh, speeds and directions. Um, you can also switch to temperature. Um, you can see. Um, let me turn this, hold on, sorry, turn this off. Um, I'm in Michigan now, there's a cold front approaching, and uh, it'll be here in two days. If you actually like double click or click on a location, you can get an idea for that area, what the temperature is. If you don't like Celsius, just click on it, you get Fahrenheit. That's the current temperature in my area, it's about 41 degrees. Same thing with wind speed, you can select knots, miles per hour kilometers per hour etc so we've got out of 60 degrees so um, not much wind two miles per hour practically negligible um, so anyway hopefully you enjoyed finding out about the outer net again visit outernet.is if you want more information um, visit the link below also and uh, check out the other videos about this uh, pretty cool technology and click like thumbs up if you enjoyed it and learned something and subscribe if you want to be notified when more of my videos come out. This is John from John's DIY Playground. Have a great day.